Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week, the rocks that gets an ECU. Alright guys, welcome back and those who've been following will know that I have my 1998 uh, Porsche Boxster base model that I have been most of the way through a swap for with a uh, 4.2 litre Audi V8 out of an Audi A6. And I did temporarily try to flash the factory ECU which could be done but uh, um, I messed up and uh, fried my laptop. I'll put a link up above, you can catch up uh, to where we are with this build, but ultimately the aim for this car is to continue development. So just running the factory ECU wasn't gonna cut it anyway and it was going to eventually be an upgrade. So I talked to Link and uh, they came to the party as, uh, as they do, as they have with uh, Harry My 911 which also is running a Link ECU. And uh, yeah, so basically we're be gonna be running a Link Extreme, which is their new G4X series. Also uh, wideband controllers. So uh, I should have everything I need here to get this car set up and running with a aftermarket ECU. And this ECU will handle everything I can throw at it with uh, lots of headroom for moving forward. So. First things first, remove the boot cover because the ECU is going to live in the boot where the uh, original Boxster ECU was living and uh, start wiring this thing up. Okay, so I've got my Extreme ECU here. I'm actually uh, a big fan of this because I've got the Thunder in my 911 and it's or at least 50% bigger than this. This is much smaller. This does have uh, external lambda units, but they're tiny little things. So this is actually quite compact, which is nice. And this, I'm gonna sit over here, I think, basically exactly where the original ECU sat and I've been tossing up how to actually wire up the engine because the engine is already completely wired up for the factory ECU. So there is, all the plugs are in place, all of the, the sensors are all in place. I don't need to add anything to it. So it doesn't make sense to rewire all of that. The issue is, is that this stupid Audi loom, um, even though I can reach it back here, I can't strip back the middle of it. The middle of it is just full of, it's, it's a, it looks like it's actually, they lay all the wires into a mold and then fill it with foam. So every single wire is wrapped up in the loom and then all foam filled and you just can't separate out the foam from the, uh, the wire. So essentially what I was hoping I could do was run these original wires all the way up to the ECU itself and then just um, de-pin the original loom plugs and pin these wires straight into the loom so that we can, I, I can just unplug it from the, uh, the ECU in the, uh, in the boot and disconnect it easily. It wouldn't be an issue, but it's just not gonna work. It's just not gonna happen. There's no easy way to um, to sort of join this without having this big ugly hard bit in the middle that doesn't want to bend or doesn't want to do anything. So what I think I'm going to do is I actually talk to uh, Raceworks and I've got myself one of these Deutsch bulk head connectors. I've got the same thing in the back of Harry. Makes it much easier to uh, sort of put an engine in and out. There'll just be these two plugs um, with all the wires in it and I can just unclip and we're ready to go. This is a, 
um, a neat way of joining the wires because I could have spliced them all together in the middle, but the trouble is if I splice them all, then if there is an issue trying to, you know, it's the splice area is going to be big and messy and I think this is going to be a cleaner way of joining the looms together. So now it's time to, to cut the loom and then start working my way back through the original Audi uh, wiring diagram and connecting them up to my link looms. Wiring an ECU is a daunting task. I have always seen it as, as that. You can see this mess of wires that I just cut off from the factory loom, and then I've got this mess of wires. There's actually only one loom of two looms of wires. You look at all these wires and go, it's too hard, I can't do it. it like, just get somebody else to do it. It's, it's beyond me. And that's how I felt, but it's actually not as difficult as it may seem. You look at it as a whole and go, oh, that is crazy. Just like looking at the uh, my Alferrari build or, or any of these things as a whole, you look at the whole thing and you get daunted. But if you actually break it down and just do one at a time, it's not actually uh, as crazy as it first appears. So first things you need to do is you need to actually get yourself um, uh, if you can, a copy of wiring diagrams. I just managed to Google this one and download it. Um, they're, they're available if you need it. And here, uh, Link supplies you with a quick start guide in their ECU, and it's got all of what all of the, uh, the pinouts all do. And then it has a listing page where you can go through and uh, you can write down what each wire is and what it connects to what, so that you can refer back to it. So, what I'm gonna do now is uh, I've gone through this loom and I've already just paired out some of the bigger wires from the littler wires. These big ones, uh, most of them I believe are probably for the core packs. Each core pack has its own power and ground. And then um, there's just one of these little tiny wires that are actually a trigger. So when you break sensors down like that, it's actually not that complicated. And it's only uh, the one little tiny wire that actually connects up to the loom, to the ECU, will trigger it and tell it when to turn on. Injectors are basically the same deal, so it's not, it's not crazy complicated. So I find that's an easy way to start, is to start doing those things. So let's not complicate this too much. Let's start out by connecting up the coil packs. I think that's a good place to start. Let's uh, start wiring from coil pack one, and then just coil pack two, coil pack three, coil pack four. Let's get into it. All right. Oh, I am very stiff and sore from sitting inside this uh, car on a very cold day working through this wiring, but I'm getting there. So um, now I've got my crank angle sensor and my cam angle sensor connected up. Um, oh, sorry, getting stiff. Um, I got now onto the electronic throttle. Now the electronic throttle um, has six wires going into it. So there's two bigger ones, which are relatively obvious. That's the, uh, the, the power for the actual motor itself. The four other wires, there are two throttle position sensors in this car. So uh, in, in that one throttle body, they want to have some redundancy and there's always two signals. Um, and basically there's two signal wires and a power and a ground. Uh, so again, quite, straightforward it's really not that complicated and i've got my um my loom probably halfway there or more than halfway there uh just by doing those things so it's 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 i can't stress enough how daunting it seems and how it really isn't for even someone with a basic grasp of uh um wiring if you can wire in an old car stereo then you can wire in a uh, an ecu now we've got those in maybe we need to start having a look at some temperature sensors and knock sensors. All right, well that was a lot of work. Uh, just time consuming, not too difficult. As I mentioned before, one wire at a time and it all goes together. But now I have basically everything connected up to the computer. So 
Uh, I've got all of the coil packs, all of the injectors, the airflow meter, the uh, electronic throttle. Even this car has a, uh, a very basic form of variable valve timing. I've got that connected up as well. And um, I always wondered how that worked. And it's, uh, quite a, it's quite a simple system, at least on this car, is basically you have, uh, on this car, there's uh, a chain between uh, the inlet and exhaust cams on, the, um, on each side. And um, there's, a, uh, there's a tensioner arm in the middle, and it either um, sort of pushes one way or pushes the other way. And if it sort of flexes the chain one way or the other way, it alters the cam timing slightly just by that little movement there um yeah quite interesting to learn how that works and that's all connected up now the last things i need to connect up to the engine are the wideband sensors so i have on harry i have the link thunder but on the uh link extreme and they're moving away from that the thunder with the internal uh lambda sensors now it's easy to just have these basic add-ons so that is all the, um, the unit I actually need to add on to uh, run wideband sensors. So it's tiny, much better for packaging, making that because the whole ECU is much smaller. Now, I've got to install these wideband sensors just to make sure they're the right type because there's a few different kinds. So I'm going to take out the old widebands, put these in, and then work out somewhere to uh, run this wiring to get it into the engine bay. And then it's just a simple... Um, four wire plug, power, ground, and then two wires going to the ECU. All right, so I've got everything set up now so I can mount my Link uh, ECU in and it, all of the functions are connected to the engine. So uh, all of the signals are ready to go for this. But I still have a few bits and pieces left to go. I've got to go through and connect all of the main power and grounds to all of the uh, core packs, all the injectors. Um, Oxygen sensors, there's a bunch of bits and pieces that I need to send power out to. And I've started actually um, butchering and playing with the loom for the Boxster, the original loom that went to the ECU. So obviously I don't need the ECU anymore, but I need some of the, uh, the, the signals out of this. And I also had a look in here, and in the back here, we actually have the relay panel. And these relays, I can reuse a lot of these because they're already wired up, they're already powered up, as long as I work out what wire is what that comes out of this mess. Um, these wires were already set up to, uh, to power injectors and coil packs and stuff like that anyway, so they're all ready to go. So uh, I just need to uh, reutilize these uh, and uh, get it all working on the Audi engine, which is not as easy as it sounds because I'm, I, I took a while and I wrapped my head around the Audi wiring diagram. So that's the sort of thing that we're looking at for the Audi wiring. But of course, the Boxster wiring diagram is completely different and is such a mess and difficult to follow. But I'm starting to wrap my head around what everything is, how it all works, and um, yeah. Obviously, it's slow and tedious doing wiring and uh, it's not the most interesting thing to film. But hopefully, you got some insights into what it takes to actually uh, wire up an ECU and it looks, you look at this mess of wires and it looks so daunting, but it really isn't. It's not as bad as you would think. If you can wire up a car stereo, then you can wire up an ECU to an engine. It's just the same principles just over and over and over about 50 times. Anyway, that is it for this week. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. You got something out of it. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff. And if you need to find parts for any of your Porsches, make sure you compare parts at PorschePartsByJeff.com first. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one.